Now I'll request someone from Texas. Now, I'll request TechFest team member to present welcome token to Mr. Shraddha Sharma. Now, I'll request TechFest member to present welcome token to Professor Ramind D. Goody, Dean ACR. So now I'll hand over to Mr. Shraddha Sharma. Can you hear me auditory? Yes, yes. But the game energy me. Everyone behind and everyone, can you hear me? Yes, good. You know, so Akash, I have to tell you this that uh, I've been hearing since uh, last one or two months that uh, there is a movie which is doing very well and it's called Animal. And uh, every uh, week after week, house full hoda which is you know very good after pandemic people are going and it is uh, a house full movie and somewhere i've not gone and seen it and I've, i don't know about it but mujhe lag raha hai to see you and meet you today we have a house full and we have and all of you please give a big round of applause to yourself for coming here and hopefully we are going to have a very very good conversation um, and uh, i'm very excited to be talking to you but sabse pehle, I want to ask you this question. How does it feel to be in IIT Mumbai? <laughs> Afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good end of the year. For me, you know, to be at uh, IIT Bombay is a part of my bucket list item because I'll just share a small story and the motivation to be here. Uh, my father, one of my biggest inspirations and heroes is uh, always wanted me to be an engineer. Full disclaimer, I'm not an engineer. Um, so to be invited at an engineering college of such stature has been an interesting honor for me. In fact, he was not believing that I was going to come and speak here, so he sent my wife, Shloka, who was kind enough as witness to be here uh, with us today. So uh, really, really happy to be here, and uh, I'm quite excited to talk to you guys. You know, thank you uh, for coming here, and I have to say this on behalf of TechFest, IIT Mumbai, that you are here. It means a lot to everyone, because none of us in this room are unaware. In fact, we are all, in a way, very, very proud of what Reliance, what Geo has done for India. And I was telling you backstage, I come from Bihar, and for us, you know, communication, way of living, and everything back home changed. and. Uh, and a lot of love is happening, a lot of impact is happening, a lot of connection is happening because of Geo. And Akash, I want to ask you, you know, this is, this is a new India and you are a leader, business leader, tech leader of new India. You're driving this. You're the chairman of Reliance Geo. I want to ask you to take us through a bit of your personal journey and, you know, what are the principles that drive this entrepreneurship, this innovation? What are the principles that drives you? You know, from my perspective, um, I always think that you make life through inspirations. And I was lucky to have 
my inspirations right at my house in terms of my grandfather, my father, and my mother. And from a very young age, you know, when was, whilst I was growing up, uh, the talks at home, of course, uh, used to be around what's good for India. And, and that, that has resonated with me, you know, throughout my life. And today, if I have to say what we're trying to pursue at Reliance is equal to what India is trying to pursue on a global so we've always at Reliance believed that, um, and um, that what's good for India is good for Reliance, and that's something that I've heard throughout my formative years and childhood years, and that that's something that is very ingrained in my um, mind from that perspective. And um, for me, my personal journey, I'm I'm very very lucky to be working in an area I've been deeply passionate about. You know, I've been obsessed with technology since my father got his first phone in late 2003. Uh, and, um, I'm, and for me, what technology really does from an obsession of changing languages on a Siemens S45 phone, uh, it, what I realized, it, it's a great equalizer tool. You know, it crosses the boundaries of demographics, it crosses the boundaries of caste, it crosses the boundaries of uh, you know, borders, and you self, you self said it, you know, that uh, you come from Bihar, and to them, a geo service is no different from a service that we have in our top cities. So, the power of technology to be an equalizer in today's society is something that has always deeply inspired me, and, and you know, what makes us most proud at Geo is yeah, the products and services that we roll out, but the amount of lives that we're changing on a daily basis. That's what motivates me personally to come to work every morning and, and try to improve a billion people's lives. And, and that's, uh, that's really where this fascination comes from. And it also keeps me, you know, I've recently become a father, so it also keeps me young to be working in an area that I'm deeply passionate about. Yeah, no, uh, I can only say, uh, on behalf of everyone here in this room, that more power to you. And we hope that you continue to p work as deeply and as passionately because in your work, you are making sure that we are, we should not forget that we are a country of 1.4 billion people. And, uh, and also a country which celebrated when it came to tech, you know, what was in the West. And today we all can say among many, many things that we have a geo in our country. And that brings me to this question, Akash, is, you know, in tech, and we are at Tech Fest, in the tech world, things change fast. Everything is changing so fast, and we are in the era of AI now. How do you, as an organization, as a company, make sure that, you know, you're this, this mindset and this culture of innovation remains? And, and how do you drive that continuously? It's a interesting question i'll try to summarize it into a couple of uh, key points you know i you know in technology you're always working on the next idea for the next decade right you're working on technologies that will probably surface into the consumer uh, point of view in maybe 5 7 10 years from now you know areas like brain compute quantum computing you know we're right now in the age of data science and the talks about that started about five or six years ago. So we'll always keep a keen eye on, on the formative technologies that can, you know, shape society and benefit a lot of uh, people. And, uh, but from my point of view, we've always kept a keen eye to innovate at a customer level. You know, that's, that's something that we've been focused at, at Geo for many, many uh, quarters now and saying, you know, how do we really keep the customer in our mind when we're coming to our innovations? Uh, the example that I'm, uh, our most recent launch has been on Geo Bharat, which is our 4G smartphone that we've just launched. And um, that's a compelling story, you know. We still, you know, when Geo launched, there were about 50 crore Indians that didn't have access to data. And uh, from that perspective, that, that story still lives today. I mean, there's still about 20 crore people that don't have access to data. So when we're talking about innovation, we want to do it at 
a ground level that makes a difference to each and every person's life. And um, from that perspective, we want to make sure that our innovation impacts every Indian. And that's exactly what we've done with Geo Bharat, you know, launching it at a sub thousand rupee, which has the full capability of a good smartphone in terms of media streaming, webs, and all our communication applications. Um, so that's, that's something. And on the other hand, we're also working on high-grade technologies of having blockchain and AR, VR into our uh, um, portfolio of uh, products and services. But again, the thread that connects all of these things is really what customer problem are we trying to solve and, uh, and how will that really benefit uh, India? So, Yeah. Uh, you know, I get very inspired because most of us here, sitting here, come from India, come from Bharat. And again, Akash, when you say that at the heart of it, you're thinking about customer, you're thinking about customers from across. This is you thinking about the 1.4 billion people in our country. And, and that brings me to the, my next question, which is, you know, India, at least when I was growing up, we always used to look at West, or when it came to, again, I'm saying technology, innovation, entrepreneurship, startups, references were uh, to West. But today we are living in an India. We are proud of this India. And if I, I have to say that, you know, the best place when it comes to innovation and everything is today India. I want to ask you, how do you see digital technologies shaping the course of, you know, the next 10 years when we are saying that we will be the most advanced country in the world? You know, I think India is on a path of going from our $3 trillion economy to the next 5.5 or $6 trillion economy in the coming years. Uh, and in this decade, we'll definitely see this happen. Right? I, I don't think about digital technologies as an industry. It's really an enabling tool that will go across industries to make sure that people adopt it for higher efficiency, higher uh, outcomes. And um, from that point of view, I think it'll, we'll, ha we'll have to shape each industry as it goes. And that's something that we, we will keep on working at. Um, you know, for us, what is so important is that to make all technologies consumable. Uh, techno you know, we've, we are very invested in our research and development center, but as invested as we are is to launch products and services that can go across industries. Um, you know, we've, uh, 5G private networks is something that we're very excited about, uh, you know, that each enterprise, whether no, no problem of its size, whether it's an MSME or a medium enterprise or a large enterprise can come up with its own enterprise application sitting on top of our 5G stack. So that's uh, something that we're very, very cognizant about. And for us, it's very important that we have an ecosystem of development that we drive across all points. Um, uh, and that's, that's something that we're working and that's a vision of Geo 2.0 that we are working on. You know, I was checking this. Uh, in 2020, you were included in the Fortune 40 and 40 list of successful young entrepreneurs. Given all this success and early success, you're young. What's your ambition, uh, you know, moving forward with Geo and especially in the context of AI? Let me first talk about the... 40 under 40, you know, I, I believe that you I've always been brought up in a team culture. So the achievement is for all of the people that are working at Geo who are under the age of 40, but our average age that we have at Geo is 30. So I'm only the flag bearer of the achievement, but uh, the hard work is done by each and every one who contributes to Geo. So that's something that I truly believe. Um, you know, in terms of Geo, we've, we've always founded Geo as a digital society company and enabling that for India. Of course, we first had to tackle the connectivity part because without that basic infrastructure, information would not be accessible to the whole 
of India. And that's, that's what we did in Geo 1.0, you know, we really made information available to now a 500 million uh, user base. Um, and uh, in terms of AI, I think it's going to transform every area of, um, of products and services. You know, we, we're working very hard to launch AI not only as a vertical inside our organization, but also horizontally across all our sectors. So you'll see us really focused and launching products and services in the media space, in the commerce space, of course, in the communication stack too, and all across our devices. You know, we've been working on our own OS for a while now for the TVs, and uh, we were comprehensively thinking about how to launch it. Um, from <laughs> on a lighter note, you know, my brother-in-law was showing me an AI application that set the temperature of his mattress last night. Uh, so, you know, it's really going to consume everything. I think what's important in this age and as we go into this fourth industrial uh, age is AI for everyone. And uh, to me, yes, AI stands for artificial intelligence, but it also stands for all included. So that's something that I truly believe in. And unless we give it in forms of consumable products and services, and I think we've just scratched the surface with, you know, um, large language models and generative AI and, and the next decade is going to be defined by these applications. I think, again, drawing back to how it can impact society at a large, we're working, right, I mentioned, across all our consumer ecosystems to launch uh, AI services and products that people can consume. But I think the transformative areas of AI that will be is what can we do it for social good? And you know, the applications that we'll see in healthcare and education is the need of the hour, you know, and um, uh, that's something that, you know, I believe will transform India and leapfrog India. And from my perspective, you know, technologies, once you launch good products and services, uh, technology have no barriers, uh, whether it be national borders, this is something that we can scale globally and that's, definitely an aspiration that we have at GEO that in the coming years slash decades that we are able to make India uh, world-class products from India for the world. So that's something that we are continuously having an um, eye on and, and we, we hope that we'll be able to launch such services that uh, makes India uh, and Indians very proud. You know, uh all the very best. <laughs> yeah. I say that uh, we say, uh, you know, many, I, most of you in this room, we've been talking about, we say that, oh, look at WhatsApp, the number of users. But I always, whenever one is traveling, we say, oh, look at Geo and the number of users. And the diverse set of users, right? Uh, uh, brings me to my next question, Akash. Is in a company of your size, right? Like, which is, we see this as a huge, huge, large enterprise organization. How do you, you know, how do you continuously maintain the culture of entrepreneurship and innovation? Because it becomes hard, right, when you are so large. Uh, you know, we, I've thought about this a lot. Um, and the first point I want to make is, um, you know, it comes to company organization design. And from our perspective, we've always organized ourselves in extremely small teams. We call ourselves the largest startup in the world. Uh, but fundamental to that is a culture that we've tried to imbibe within GEO. Um, and for us, uh, we have extremely small teams working on focused tasks. And that, uh, that really gives us a methodology of try fast and fail even faster. And that, that is the journey of an entrepreneur, right? To, to keep on trying things and pushing that innovation to new and new limits. Um, on, a light, on a lighter side, you know, we have a culture at Reliance to be working quite late uh, in the evening. So we've organized each team, so each team should be able to satisfy 
themselves by organizing in two pizza teams. So that's a culture of Geo that we have that all our teams are organized that for dinner when they're at office, they can, you know, be happy with two pizzas across the table. So uh, that's something that we've really, really imbibed on. And, and the main thing here is to, you know, keep that try and fail fast mindset and adaptability and agility. That's something that we focused on and we're enabling it through this uh, organization structure. And, and if I had to ask you on behalf of many people who would be thinking about starting up, about their own entrepreneurial endeavors, doing something, you know, what would you say? Like, I don't want to use the word guiding principle, but what would you say that they should keep in mind from your journey, your you experience? Know, it's just been a decade for me to be working in the corporate world of India, so I'm not sure I have enough wisdom to give guiding principles on a successful business venture. But uh, from my perspective, you know, uh, things that I've lived by in my life, right, uh, and this has come from a very young age, uh, is always work for the good of society. I think that's something that has been, um, and especially when you're in the consumer space, right, uh, in, in that you have to think about your consumer and think about what are you really trying to change your, their life. The second point comes from being deeply passionate of what you want to work about, you know, and, and that continues to be the driving energy force behind you on an everyday basis. I, you know, being in, uh, running a business is like permanently being in a driver's seat, right? You can't be very, very distracted at all points of time. So um, from our perspective, you know, from my perspective, I've always said that if you don't enjoy, and as cliched as it sounds, if you really don't enjoy it, then, you know, you're not going to get that. The second point that I've always, you know, don't be afraid of failure. Uh, I think that's something that I'm lucky that um, my parents have been able to guide us and say that it's okay if you fail. It's important to recognize when it happens and take those steps to really change that uh, quite quite quickly and course correct. Um, but failure, for, you know, I was at a recent speech of Prime Minister Modi and uh, he said, uh, and this was at uh, the Olympic Committee event, the International Olympic Committee that we held in, in Mumbai. And I said, when you're, when you're part of a process, there will come bumps, there will come successes, there will come failures, but you have to take the failures as your learnings there are only winners and learners. There's no winners and losers. So that's something that really resonated with me and throughout that. Um, and the last point I think is always be honest to yourself. I think that's something that I've tried to do, you know, reflect at the end of every day of what you could do better and what you could change uh, in your life. So that's, that's something that I've always lived uh, my corporate life with and um, and it's kept me in good stead till now, and I hope that these values stay on forever and gets imbibed in the culture of Reliance. Yeah, yeah. you know, for a 30, how old are you? 32, but... <laughs> year old. There's a lot of wisdom, and what I am picking up, Noah Kash, from you, is that humility is, uh, you know, it's most powerful and the most attractive trait and you have that and with and if you have humility then you have learning mindset and wisdom mindset so yes uh, you know this question I'm going to read because this is uh, 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 something I have written down that Reliance Geo and Tech Fest IIT uh, Mumbai partner together in 2014 uh, for the launch of Geo 4G which was followed by three uh, by three years of title sponsorship Last year, TechFest acted as a medium for IIT Bombay for, to transition to full 5G campus, being one of the first college in the country to do so. And, and, and today we also in a way celebrate a decade of this partnership. What do you have to say about this partnership and, and, and you know, nurturing this kind of a corporate enterprise and institution, academic institution partnership? Firstly, for me, I think it's a matter of great pride 
2013 is when I joined the company. So I remember coming back, Pankaj and Ashish, my colleague, Srini are here, and I remember having the conversation of our collaboration to be back here at an engineering school is a great pride of me, uh, pride for me. Uh, from our perspective, you know, I'm very excited about what we can potentially do in the future. We've had a few good conversations today about how we can take our learnings and extend that. Uh, also, we've been working on a project uh, with IIT Bombay to launch a Bharat GPT program. So that's something that I think more and more of such programs that we'll be able to launch will really make both the organizations learn multifold. And I think that, you know, you've always pushed the boundaries of uh, uh, innovation at IIT Bombay, and uh, that's something that we've also been part of our culture at Reliance Geo. Um, so I think we can really, really extend it. And for me, I, I always say this, that empowering the youth is a very, very core critical mission of ours. Uh, they'll always push us to think out of the box and push the needle of innovation for us. Uh, you know, I welcome each and every IIT student that wants to be in our campus and uh, add value to Reliance Geo is with open arms. So that's something that uh, I think we can really foster over the next decade and hopefully this this relationship becomes a multi-decade relationship and, uh, and grows from strength to strength. Yes, and I have rapid fire questions, but before that, sir, if you have a question to ask. Yeah, Akash, really great to have you and such powerful messages that you have. Uh, technology leadership, um, rather than say east to west technology migration, east to global technology migrations, making that impact, global impact. Uh, developing products for the global market. And I think Reliance has just been the pioneer in this aspect. And it's really nice that, you know, you've been here with us in terms of inspiring all our students to be able to, you know, uh, take up this as, a, as, a, as one of the missions. Um, I would also like to say that, you know, you, you said about AI and an alternate definition of AI being all inclusive. And that really talks about you know the drive from your side and as a very important message, looking at creating societal impact, taking I would say PM Modi's um, uh, objective of sabka sat sabka vikas. You know, so really inspiring messages. Thank you very much. But I would also on the behalf of all the students ask you a um, question. Um, you graduated from Brown university in uh, majoring in economics. Well, I think, uh, I'm sure all of uh, the audience would agree that you still look, look like you are in college. <laughs> Don't look that you graduated from college, you still look a very much a college student. But just thinking back to your college years, what is it that you would have done differently? Just looking back, what is it that you felt you would have done differently? In? Hindsight is the greatest tool, no? <laughs> Definitely try to pursue an engineering degree. <laughs> but, um, you know, from I, I was very fortunate to have a very good college experience. Uh, from my perspective, uh, I think college is, when I look back at it, uh, college is the best time of your life. Uh, there's no doubt to me about it. Uh, the couple of things that I would do probably differently is I would learn from my classes, but I would learn from my classmates even more. Uh, that's something that uh, I was uh, not as focused on uh, whilst I was in college. Of course, it was my first experience in America living outside home. So uh, as a good Indian student, you know, you want to be uh, at the top of your class, but that's something that I would focus on more. And I would look at the whole college experience as a wholesome experience, you know. If I look back today and, and say what's the best part of uh, college is really the friends I made uh, and, uh, and really focus more on that uh, as, as the educational experience of college is also important, but I think the 
social experience of college comes as important as that. So that's something that I would do a little bit differently than what I would have, what I did in my four years at Brown. But, uh, you know, I, I firmly believe that college is the best time of anyone's life, at least till you're finished. Thank you. Thanks very much. Over to the rapid fire. Yes. But, 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 but let me just add, I think the point that you made about you know, the network, the, stu the students, the friends that you make, I think one of the key learnings in IIT, and I'm sure all the IIT students would agree, is what ca we carried as a treasure was the summary of our late night CAC sessions, I would say, starting at maybe 10 p.m. in the night and running all the way up to 4 a.m. in the morning on any aspect and every aspect with no holes barred. And that really helped build our personalities, helped our debating skills, you know, analytical skills. <laughs> Certainly we rhyme very well with that, what you said. Thank so, you. Over to. You know, you had a clap on this so that ev everyone, now we know all the students agree that being in college is the best time of your lives and uh, and the year is coming to an end so hopefully all of you will have time to think and reflect and see that how do you you know based on what you said is while you do everything how do you learn and how do you engage and how do you make friends uh, in college uh, because that will hold you very very strongly and steadily and Akash now with this we will come to the rapid fire round are you ready for this I hope there's no hamper at the end. No, but there's no hamper or nothing it is. <laughs> we, will, uh, we will only have claps. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I will say a word and you have to say what that means to you. So my first word for you is uh, success. Something that you should strive for. Mm, good. Uh, money. A byproduct of service to the country. And uh, what comes to your mind when I say, ye achhe se taali baja do na tum log. Matlab aise students who you're living the best time of your life so you can clap also like with full gusto. And uh, I ask you, India. What comes to your mind? The cradle of the world and the biggest innovation center for the next coming decades. Brilliant. Brilliant. And again, I said end of the year. If I have to ask you, maybe you can say for next year. But otherwise, what comes to your mind when I say dream? A dream. Dream. India to win the T20 Cup. <laughs> You know, I can go on and on and on, but this was fantastic. And everyone, let's give a big, big round of applause to Akash Ammani. And, you know, you were honest, you were straightforward, you spoke from the heart, and you spoke about the country. And, and, and you know, what I'm taking is the authenticity. And I hope that all of us in this room think about our country like you thinking about India, be it AI to anything, it has to include everyone and you're thinking like that, Akash Ambani, very proud of you and hope you continue uh, to take India forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just want to take this opportunity to wish everyone a very happy 2024. I'm especially excited uh, for the new year. Of course, my brother is getting married in 2024, so it's a special matter for us a, as a family, but uh, all the best for 2024 and hope all your dreams come true in this year. Yes. Thank you and uh, everyone for being a great, great uh, audience and, and, I, uh, uh, and I hope you had a very good time. So all the very best. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Now, I would request Chobit, overall coordinator, to bring the memory booklet, and I request Sri Akash Amani sir to sign in it.
Now, I would request Professor Surya Narayan Dola, Dean of Student Affairs, to present a special memento to Sri Akash Ambani, sir. Now, I would request Prakhar to present a memento to Mrs. Shraddha Sharma. A heartfelt thank you to our esteemed speaker, Mrs. Shraddha Sharma. Your presence has truly enriched our event. We extend our gratitude to Sri Akash Ambani sir for gracing us with his presence and contributing to success of our gathering. Your collective presence has made us a truly special event. Thank you all.